Well, another very warm welcome back, all my vintage dirt bike loving YouTubers, and thanks once again for tuning in to my classic dirt bike TV channel. Now, coming up in this uh, next video, we're going to showcase a few uh, races from the 2008 uh, Blen Carn Classic Scramble, one of the uh, big classic events from the UK each year. Uh, this was, of course, before it changed its name to the Cumberland uh, Grand National. So we're going to showcase a few uh, races from uh, that event. So I do hope uh, you enjoy them. So let's just jump uh, straight into the video with race one. Yes, thanks for joining me once again as we take in some of the racing highlights from the 2008 Blencarn Classic Scramble. Uh, we're going to start with the Twin Shock Bandits as they leave the line. A nice uh, collection of uh, Twin Shock racers in this race. It looks like it's uh, number 66. I think that's Peter Lightfoot who's made uh, quite a good start there on the 490 Michael. Number 37 is Walter Bickmore in second position. Paul Chiappa is in third. That looks like Mark Sylvester in fourth uh, spot there. And so as they continue on lap one, it is indeed still Peter Lightfoot, number 66, second Walter Bickmore, third now is Paul Chiappa with Mark Sylvester in fourth position, number five just making his way through there is Richard Charlton uh, riding that uh, big CCM machine. It looks like most of the riders have uh, negotiated the first two or three corners, so as they come round to complete uh, lap one, it's still... Uh, Peter Lightfoot, number 66, your race leader. Second is Walter Bickmore, number uh, 37. But this has been a, a good start to the race for Peter Lightfoot. Another one of these uh, very talented Cumbrian uh, racers. So it's still Walter Bickmore second. It's Mark Sylvester in third. I think that's uh, Russell Watson in fourth position. Number five going through there again is Richard Charlton. Bill Brown just making his way through. We're back to our race uh, leader. In fact, we have a change of leader at the front now. It's uh, number 37 here, Walter Bickmore uh, from Scotland. Now, you may remember this particular bike on my uh, YouTube channel. This was a bike that Walter built uh, a few years ago. And uh, after its first ever uh, race event, the bike was stolen from uh, Walter's at the side of Walter's house and uh, there was a big campaign uh, put on the TMX News to try and recover the bike and Walter did eventually uh, get his bike back unscathed so he's uh, riding it very well here at Blencarn in 2008. Number one going through there is Paul uh, Chiappa also uh, from Scotland. Richard Charlton just making his way through on that uh, number five Clues CCM. And number 50 just going through there is uh, Russell Watson riding one of those big uh, HPF 500 Hondas from the Horse Power Factory. Big powerful uh, machines, these uh, HPF machines, but uh, as you can see, uh, Russell's riding it uh, superbly. But it's still number 37, uh, Walter Bickmore on the Michael, who is your race leader. Second now is uh, Mark Sylvester. Uh, Russell Watson is in third position, but it's a good battle here between Mark Sylvester and Russell Watson. It looks like Russell Watson wants to take that uh, second place position, so as they come up the hill, it's uh, Russell Watson still can't make that uh, second place stick as they cross the line to complete uh, yet another lap. But it's still the uh, rider from Penny Cook and Midlothian in Scotland, number 37, Walter Bickmore, your race leader. Number one is Mark Sylvester. Uh, number 50 in third position is uh, Russell Watson. And just coming up into fourth uh, place is uh, Gary Parker. Now, I think Gary Parker's riding a big uh, four-stroke Yamaha machine, uh, not unlike one of those big uh, HL500. So look out for Gary Parker in this race. But here's your race leader, number 37. Walter Bickmore on the 490 Michael. Second is still Mark Sylvester. Third is Russell Watson on the HPF Honda. And you can just see Gary Parker making his way through there in fourth position. 
as we take a look at number 60. That's Glenn Wilson riding the big 540 Yamaha four-stroker. So we're looking at the battle for second position. It looks like uh, Russell Watson's moved into second. Number five there is Richard Charlton on the CCM who's come from absolutely nowhere to uh, third position but it's still this man here, number 37, Walter Bickmore, your race leader. Second is Mark Sylvester, number one. Third is now Gary Parker who's just passed uh, Russell Watson and uh, so Gary Parker is certainly on the move as these guys begin their last and uh, final lap of uh, this uh, Twin Shocks race. As we still look at number 86, that's uh, Gary Parker who's trying to uh, make a move on number one there, Mark Sylvester, for that second position. So as these guys head towards uh, the chequered flag, it's still Walter Bickmore, your race leader, second, Mark Sylvester, third, Gary Parker, and fourth position is Russell Watson, but uh, Walter Bickmore is still uh, looking quite comfortable for the win in this race, but uh, Gary Parker is certainly on the move. So as he comes towards the chequered flag, it's going to be a win for number 37, Walter Bickmore. Mark Sylvester is going to cross the line in second with Gary Parker there in third and uh, Russell Watson in fourth. Okay, next up we have the second Twin Shocks uh, class. This, of course, is the Twin Shock Pirates. We had the Bandits earlier, so uh, these are now uh, the Pirates, as they're so called. Quite a good lineup of riders again for this uh, class. And we're just about good uh, to go. We're just waiting on the starter. And uh, as they leave the line, that's a quite a good start there by uh, Craig Smith uh, in the middle of the pack there. It looks like this uh, rider on the YZ Yamaha has made quite a good start. Uh, I'm uh, unable to identify his number because it looks like he's got his uh, number scored out on his bike, but uh, nevertheless, another good uh, collection of twin shot riders as they uh, start at lap one. And as the riders come towards us, it looks like it's number 661. I think that's Carl Hodgson, who is your uh, race uh, leader as the rest of the chasing pack make their way through. And number 811, I think that's uh, Alan Coyne there, who's riding that uh, quite nice looking YZ465 Yamaha uh, Monoshock bike. But it's still number 661, Carol Hodgson, who is your race leader, number one, two, three in second place. I think that's uh, Peter Idden riding that 490 Michael. Looks like uh, Ian Charlton is in third position on the CCM bike. Number four there is Jim Colligan uh, on the 490 uh, Michael or uh, Mako, depending on how you pronounce it. But it's still number 661, uh, Carol Hodgson. Uh, on yet, of course, another uh, Michael machine. Uh, very popular uh, bikes for twin shock racing, racing these uh, Michaels. And uh, Carl is making the most of this uh, 490s uh, raw power as he comes round to complete another lap. Number one, two, three in second position there, that's uh, Peter Eden. And just passing us there in third position, number 54, that was uh, Ken Serbots on the uh, 360. Montessa machine. And number 241 there is uh, Bryn Larg on that uh, 250 Honda Red Rocket. Well, we're back to our race leader once again. It's still number 661, Carol Hodgson on the 440 Michael from uh, Bishop Auckland. This has been a fantastic uh, ride by Carol. Uh, still in second place is number 123. I think that's Peter Eden also riding a Michael in second position. But as you can see, Carol doing very well on his particular machine as he comes round to complete uh, yet another racing lap. And as you can see, in this particular year of 2008, the weather was absolutely uh, fantastic here at Louthwaite 
at Farm in Melbourne uh, by, of course, kind permission of the landowner, Mr Trevor uh, Odd. And, uh, of course, this rain race was won on Sunday, the 8th of June. So as these riders come round to complete another lap, it's still number 661, Carol Hodgson, who leads this man here, number 123, that's Peter Eden, also riding a Michael. But Peter Eden looks like he's went down the inside, but can he hold the line going up to the uh, chequered flag? But it's Peter Eden who's now your race leader. Second is Carol Hodgson. Now that looked like uh, number 17, I think that was Craig Smith, who was in third position from my uh, hometown in Dunfermline. So uh, Craig Smith looks like he's on the move to catch these two at the front. So it's still Peter Eden in first position, Carol Hodgson second, and this man here, number 17, Craig Smith, in third position with just a couple of laps left to go. So it's still uh, this man here, number 123, Peter Eden from Preston on the yellow uh, 490 Michael, who is your race leader. Craig Smith has now moved up into second position and is certainly catching uh, Peter Eden and as he comes round to cross the line to start his last and uh, final lap. So it's Peter Eden first, second is this man here, number 17, Craig Smith. Third looks like it's Ken Sauerbutt on that uh, 360 Montessa. And so we're going to stick with these two as they make their way through on their last and final lap. It's still a slight advantage to Peter Eden, who leads at number 17, that's Craig Smith, also uh, riding a Michael as they head uh, towards the chequered flag. But it's still Peter Eden who is managing to keep Craig Smith at arm's length in second position as they head up the hill to the far side of the racetrack. And so if both these riders head towards the last few turns of this last lap. It looks like it's Peter Eden, your race leader, but Craig Smith is just barging through there on the outside. So it looks like Craig Smith is going to take this win if he can hold the line, but it is a win for number 17, Craig Smith, with Peter Eden in second position. Ken Serbots crosses the line in third. OK, next up we're going to continue with the classic race bikes once again. Now this is the combined pre-60s and pre-65s up to 350cc. So as they head into turn one, it looks like a good start by number uh, 164. I think that's uh, Tim Dalloway who's taken the early, early lead. Uh, Andrew Johnson just going through there on his old uh, dot uh, scrambler. And so it is indeed number 164, that's Tim Dalloway on the 350 uh, BSA machine. Second, it looks like it's number 43, that's Andy Cam, also uh, riding a BSA. Uh, number 648 just making his way through, that's Mike Evans on the uh, lovely uh, Tribsa machine. So here's your race leader, number 164, Tim uh, Dalloway. Second is still number 43, that's Andy Cam, who's riding uh, quite a smaller uh, BSA bike. This is only a 250 that uh, Andy Cam is uh, riding in this race. But it's still the uh, young man from uh, Devon, uh, Tim Dalloway. Uh, Tim and his family had quite a long journey from uh, Devon up to uh, Penrith to take part in this event, so it just shows you uh, some of the commitments that some of these riders make in terms of uh, travelling uh, to these ve these events all over the UK. Now, number 139 there is Dave Godley riding his Mapsa, which I assume is the uh, matchless engine inside uh, the BSA frame. So there's your race leader, number 164, Tim uh, Dalloway, making his way through to complete another racing lap. And number 647 just coming through is Adam Purdom on the uh, 350 uh, BSA. 
So it's still number 164, Tim Dalloway, as he comes round to cross the line to begin his last and final lap of this race. Second is still Andy Cam. I think that could be Peter Jackson in third position. As the riders cross the line to begin their last and final lap, uh, we're looking at number 733. I think that's at Lee Jackson. And Lee Jackson, of course, is riding that uh, 550 uh, BSA machine. And number 77 just coming through is John Threkeld on the very rare 250 uh, cotton machine. Well, this has been another uh, excellent effort from the young uh, Tim Dalloway as he heads towards the checkered flag to take his first win of the day on his uh, 350 BSA. So it's uh, another good win here for number 164, uh, Tim uh, Dalloway. Now, Andy Cam started this uh, race quite well in second position, but I don't think Andy's going to cross the line in second place here. Looks like he's going to finish in fourth position, but it was uh, still another very good ride for the young man from Devon, number 164, Tim Dalloway. Okay, we're going to continue with the classics once again. I think this is the pre-68 unlimited class. Now, uh, don't quote me on that particular fact because uh, this was 2008. I'm still trying to recall uh, many of the classes, but uh, nevertheless, look out for uh, number one in the yellow there. That's Terry uh, Challoner, who is a very talented uh, racer. And as they leave the line, it looks like Terry's it managed to get the whole shot uh, with that uh, number one plate. I'm not entirely sure what uh, kind of bike that uh, Terry's riding, but I think it's a, a 650 a Rickman Matisse and uh, very quick into the bargain, as you can see. Quite a few of those uh, nice classic Rickman bikes in this uh, particular class. And so it's still number one, Terry Chandler is your race leader as the rest of the chasing pack make their way through. Number 171 is uh, Paul Leyland just making his way through there. And number 26 is uh, Bob Fergus on his ESO uh, Matisse 500. And uh, I think that could be at number 269. I think that's Colin uh, Iveson on his 650 Matisse who has a bit of a mechanical problem. But uh, here's your race leader, it's still number one, Terry Channeler, on that uh, very quick uh, Triumph Matisse machine. Now in second place, it's this man here, number 355. Now, he's not exactly listed in the uh, racing programme, but I'm absolutely sure that that is uh, Phil Edwards in second position. So it's still number one, Terry Channeler here, your race uh, leader on that uh, lovely and very quick uh, Matisse Triumph. Uh, Phil Edwards is still in second position. But this has been another very good ride by this uh, very talented uh, number one rider, Terry Channeler. Uh, number 355, uh, Phil Edwards is still in second position. Now, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but I think this could be an old uh, BSA or Triumph that uh, Phil is uh, riding in this race. So, as they cross the line to complete another uh, racing lap, it's still uh, Terry Channeler first with Phil Edwards in second position. Just coming towards us there is number 71, that's Richard uh, Bird. Number 439 just behind him is uh, Peter Strong who is riding a 441 at BSA. So here's your race leader once again as he comes round to begin his last and final lap of this race. It's number one, Terry Chandler on the 650 at Rickman Matisse, number 355. Phil Edwards is still in second position. And it looks like a good battle between number 64 there. That's John at Dalloway in the red with the uh, Number uh, 254 in third position, that is of course uh, Chris Dean on the 650 
Triumph Matisse. So here's your race leader as he comes round to take the chequered flag. It's going to be his first win of the day for number one, uh, Terry Challoner. And I think it's going to be a second place finish for the man in red there. That's uh, Phil Edwards in second position. Okay, next up we're moving to the uh, quick highlights of the pre-1975 up to 350cc. Another uh, cracking lineup of uh, bikes for this race. So these are the smaller engined bikes, a combination of uh, small uh, two strokes and uh, four strokes. And it looks like it's been a very good start by number 714 here. That's John Price on the 250 Honda Elsinore. He's made a very good start off the line. Uh, John Price, of course, from uh, Bridge North. Uh, very quick bites, these uh, little CR250s. Uh, second place, I think, is uh, number 533. Uh, three. I think that, that could be John Brindicum on the Kawasaki in second position as we watch the rest of the chasing pack going through. Graham Bell just going through there on the yellow as we take a look at number uh, 21. That's David Firth on his 250 uh, Spanish Baltaco. So it's still this man here, number 714, that's John Price on that very nimble uh, Honda 250 Elsinore. Uh, the Kawasaki rider in second place, I think that is John uh, Burnicum. Uh, number 129 is Derek McCauley from Scotland. Number 84 is uh, William Wallace. Uh, number 27 there, that's uh, uh, Mike Doby from uh, Scotland on his uh, CZ uh, Sidepiper. But it's uh, still number 714, John Price, who's absolutely uh, flying around this uh, Blencarn uh, race circuit on his uh, Honda. Second is still uh, the Kawasaki rider, I think that's John uh, Burnicum there, in second position. Very nice looking uh, old uh, Japanese Kawasaki. Not a lot of these bikes uh, raced these days at these vintage scrambles events. And uh, fingers crossed, and during 2021, we will be able to return uh, to take a look at these uh, kind of uh, classic racing uh, once again here in the UK. But it's still number 714, John Price, who is your race leader as he crosses the line to complete another racing lap. I think it's still the Kawasaki rider in second position and I'm almost sure that's John uh, Burnicum but apologies if it's not. Uh, number 467 there is Graham Bell uh, on his Boltaco or more commonly known as uh, Graham the Hat Bell because he uh, normally walks about the paddock uh, with a top hat on and a bottle opener uh, dangling uh, from the hat so uh, read into that uh, what you will. So it's still uh, number 714, uh, John Price, who has uh, almost led this race from uh, the start gate. So he's uh, riding a perfect race here, John uh, Price, as he comes round to cross the line to begin his last and final lap of this race. So it looks like John's got quite a decent lead over the second place man. It looks like number 99 there is in third position. Number 487, I think that's Andy Story going through. Number 129 is uh, Derek McCauley from our broth in Scotland on the 250 Boltaco Persang. Number 27 again is Mike Doby on the CZ and number 467 is the great and uh, sadly late uh, Graham Bell who uh, I think we lost in uh, 2011. So here's your race leader coming round to take the chequered flag. It's been a very good ride by uh, John Price on his CR250 Honda Elsinore machine. Very light and nimble uh, these bikes and almost perfectly suited for these tight and twisty race tracks here at uh, the, the Blaine Car and Scramble. So here he comes to take the chequered flag. It's number 714 and it's his first win of the day for uh, John Price. We're just waiting on our second place man crossing the line. It should be 
uh, the Kawasaki rider of John Burnicom, but there doesn't seem to be any sign. As we look at number 693, that's John Pickering uh, crossing the line in his BSA. OK, just to finish off the racing highlights from this 2008 Blend Car video, we're going to look at the pre-75s over 350cc class. This is the uh, slightly bigger uh, bikes for the pre-75 class, so we have a combination of uh, quite big two-strokes and uh, uh, one or two four-strokes in uh, this class, so uh, look out for uh, number 44 there, that's John Bethel in the red on the CCM, but uh, as they look, uh, leave the line, it looks like one of the Littler uh, brothers who have got, uh, taken a good start here. It looks like everybody's safely negotiated uh, turn one as they begin their first lap, and it looks like it is indeed at number 490, that's John Littler uh, riding that 380CZ, second is number 93, that's Nigel Sowerby on the Michael machine. Another very talented uh, rider from the Cumbria area. But it's still uh, John Littler here, your race leader on the 380CZ machine. Uh, Nigel Sowerby is still in second position on the 400 uh, Michael. So as they come towards us, it's uh, John Littler, your first place rider. Second is number 93, Nigel Sowerby. Third is Brian Littler in third place. Number 44 is the, the late and great uh, CCM legend uh, John Bethel, uh, riding his uh, what looks like a 1974 uh, Alan Clues CCM. But it's still uh, number 490, uh, John Littler on the Czechoslovakian CZ two-stroke 380 bike. Nigel Sowerby is in second place. It looks like Brian Littler is moving up uh, the positions there in third place. John Bethel in fourth. Just try and pick up one or two of the other riders making their way uh, through. Number 183, I think that's Richie McFadden from uh, Danoon in Scotland on his 360 bull tackle. But it's still number uh, 490, that's uh, John Littler, your race leader on the, three six, uh, sorry, the 380CZ machine. Second should be Nigel Sowerby, number 93 on the Michael, but he's coming under pressure from Brian uh, Littler to try and take that second position. Number 44 again is John uh, Bethel. As we are looking at uh, number 183 once again, uh, Richie McFadden on his uh, Boltaco 360 uh, Persang. So some of the other riders just coming round to complete another lap. Number 651, that's uh, Paul Smedley, also riding a Czechoslovakian uh, CZ bike. So we're back to our race leader, it's John Littler on his uh, CZ machine. These CZs, of course, very popular for these kind of uh, vintage and classic uh, racing, almost as popular as uh, the Michaels nowadays and uh, a very good choice of bike if you want to take up uh, classic or twin shock uh, racing. So there's your second place man, number 93, uh, Nigel Sowerby on the 400 uh, Michael two-stroke machine, trying to uh, do his best to try and catch uh, John Littler in first position. And as you can see the track conditions here at uh, Louthwaite uh, Farm in uh, Milburn in Penrith is absolutely perfect for uh, this kind of uh, classic uh, racing. So we're looking at our race leader once again, still number 490, John Littler on the CZ. Second should be uh, still Nigel Sowerby, number 93, but Brian Littler is certainly closing on Nigel Sowerby for that second place position. So it's still the uh, German-made Michael machine of Nigel Sowerby who leads uh, the uh, Czechoslovakian CZ bike of uh, Brian uh, Littler. So this uh, has all the makings of a very good finish towards the checkered flag between these two for the second and third uh, positions. But here's your race leader, uh, John Littler, as he comes round to start his last 
and final lap of this race, but it's still Nigel Sowerby in second with a slight lead over Brian Littler, but it looks like Brian is going to try his luck around the outside and take that second place position. So it's now uh, John Littler in first position with Brian Littler in second. So we are concentrating on the battle for that second and third positions between uh, this man here, Brian Littler and Nigel Sowerby in third position. Uh, remember John Littler has still got uh, a quite a good gap between these two riders up front. So this is the battle for the second and third positions as they head towards the chequered flag. But this has been quite a good race between uh, these two uh, quite talented riders of Brian Littler in second position and Nigel Sowerby here in uh, third. Our race leader of course, uh, John Littler is uh, slightly ahead of these two riders as he makes his way towards the chequered flag to take the win but this is the uh, battle for second position. It looks like Brian uh, Littler has the advantage as they head towards the last two or three turns but Nigel Sowerby is certainly having a go as they head up the hill but it could be a oh I think uh, Nigel has uh, dropped his uh, Michael so it's uh, John Littler who is the winner with Brian Littler in second position. Well I do hope you enjoyed that uh, latest uh, batch of uh, racing highlights from the 2008 Blencarn uh, scramble event. Uh, as I mentioned this event it was later changed to the Cumberland uh, Grand National but nevertheless it was still one of the uh, very big classic and vintage race events uh, to be held in the UK at Penrith uh, each year and hopefully in the future we will be able to get back to those uh, fantastic days uh, of racing once again. Okay coming up in my next video we're going to uh, showcase the latest uh, batch of paddock bikes I know how much you like uh, taking a look at these bikes in the paddock so we'll have a, another selection uh, lined up for you in my next uh, video posting so I do hope you'll uh, join me for that. But until then everybody continue to keep safe and well and we'll all get together here once again to talk about uh, vintage race bikes when we all tune in to Classic Dirt Bike TV.